So today I'm going to talk about um, this grand title of approximability of vertex decision problems. I'm sure that I'm missing many things. Um, so actually, like, yeah, even during the talk, yeah, if you know something that I yeah, didn't, didn't list, actually let me know. Yeah, we can figure this out together. Okay. So let me jump into the framework of the problems I'm going to talk about. So vertex decision problems. Okay. So let F be your like favorite family of graphs: planar graphs, chordal graphs, perfect graphs, or like any other good graph, good graphs. So then given F, so we always want to make the graph nice. So we can, so given um, this class F, we can talk about um, um, this thing called F vertex region problem. Okay. So here the input is an arbitrary graph G, and then we want to delete the fewest number of vertices, such that if we delete S from this graph G, then the, this, um, the resulting graph belongs to F. Okay. And then we want to um, find the smallest set as possible. Okay. So this is like very, um, yeah, simple and um, natural problem. Okay. And then actually, um, so this problem, this framework is nothing new. Okay, so this, um, actually the maximization version of this was studied um, from 90s uh, by Lund and Yanakakis. Okay. So, um, first, so first thing we can assume about this from F is that since we are talking about vertex region problem, okay, it's a very natural to assume that F is a hereditary. Meaning that if from G belongs to F, then any induced subgraph of G also belongs to F. Okay. So hereditary is also very nice. And then um, another thing they may, uh, assumed is also very um, natural in the sense that so F is interesting if uh, both F and F complement are infinite class. Okay. Otherwise, uh, once, um, yeah, if one thing is finite, then we can just do um, exact enumeration to solve the problem. Okay. So actually, uh, remarkably, they um, show that if um, AF is uh, hereditary and interesting, which still um, captures a lot of our graph classes, then um, the maximization version so finding the the, um, the largest induced subgraph that belongs to F actually um, is a very hard to approximate. Okay, so um, to be safe, I just um, said like no polylog and approximation, but basically reduced it to independent set. Okay? So it can be like n to the own minus epsilon. There's some technicals there, but yeah. So maximization we can't do very much. Okay? Okay? But the interesting thing is that so yeah, so I said they basically reduce the max um, independent set, which um, is a very hard um, in the approximation sense. But then if you go to minimization version, then the complement of an um, independent set is a vertex cover. Okay. But that but then in the minimization version, actually vertex cover admits a very um very simple to approximate algorithm. Okay. So the theme of this talk is um then uh, so what's the approximate little minimization version? Okay. Will everybody um have a to approximate algorithm or some will not? Okay. So I mean yeah, I'm gonna show you like at least like two examples where it, it it's not, but yeah, let's uh look at this. So yeah, so yeah, this is our general framework, and then I, I'm gonna say what I will not cover in this talk. Okay. So I already said um, so we are interested in the number of vertices we're gonna delete. Okay. So I'm not gonna talk about the vertex delete case. So some are gonna naturally extend to weight diversion, some are going to not, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna um, spend, um, talk about this. And then I think another um, very natural problem I'm not gonna talk about is equation version. Okay. This is equally natural, and then um, some people also study the modification, in a sense that yeah, we want to um, delete or add an edge. Okay, I'm not going to talk about that. There are some papers on this. And then uh, what I'm not going to talk about is a parameterize, um, parameterization by uh, opt. Okay. So it's a, it's a natural parameterization. If you talk about vertex region problem, I'm not going to talk about it. But instead, um, if um, F is uh, some characterized by some um, forbidden subgraphs or forbidden minors or like um, the graph width parameters, then I'm willing to parameterize by those um, two things. Okay. So it's going to be a very uh, mild parameterization. Okay, so it's more like an approximation algorithm talk, but let's do this. Okay. So yeah, what um what possible apps should you study? Okay, so yesterday I went to this um um ISGCI and then they um maintained um list of uh 1,641 graphs, and then yeah, and then I think um they um so this very nice diagram. So it's a very it's gonna be very hard to characterize on which app will have a good approximation algorithm or not. Unlike the maximization um, case, okay. but like, but like people apparently study like um, for some, yeah, for some famous apps. Okay, so yeah, let me go through each of them. So yeah, if from um, F is a class of graphs with no edge, okay, then basically the problem is called the vertex cover. Okay, so it has a very um, easy to approximate algorithm, and then if you assume unique game conjecture, then actually um, this like stupid to approximate algorithm is tight. Okay, so that's vertex cover, and then slightly more interesting app is uh, when F is a forest. So then the, um, the corresponding vision problem is called the feedback vertex set. Okay. And then so it's a generalization of vertex cover. So the hardness, two hardness carries over. 
and then it's um, it's a, it's a very classical thing, but there's like very long real um two approximation algorithm. Okay, so the yeah the approximation algorithm for ratio for forest is uh, the same as a vertex cover. Okay, and then when f is a set of all bipartite graphs. Okay, and then the, um, this problem is a called a called Ulrich cycle transversal. Then um then um so the best approximation algorithm gives you root log n approximation, and then um. Under the unique games conjecture, actually, we can rule out that there's no constant vector approximation algorithm. And then, as far as I know, um, yeah, you can correct me. So this is the only um, case where we can rule out, um, yeah, only example where we already ruled out constant vector approximation. And that's, yeah, that's to the best of my, my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So let me know if, um, yeah, I'm missing something. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Everything is under unique games. I think um, so. If you um, if you don't like unique games, then uh, you can get the um, now like root two instead of two, okay, for these two things. But this, yeah, it's, it's some constant, but not super constant. Okay, and then um, the two other more recent results are like uh, when f is a planar, then um, this is the problem is called the uh, planarization, and then we can get polylog approximation algorithm. Actually, it's not like true because um, the algorithm runs in quasi polynomial time, so it's uh, it's a uh, yeah. So this is a uh, really hard, and then um, this one is a uh, more recent one. So if um, f is cordial, then we can delete. Um, uh, yeah, we can get um, log square and approximation algorithm in polynomial time. Okay. But hardness, yeah, um, I don't know anything perhaps better than two here. Okay, so that's an uh, interesting open question. Okay. So those are famous apps. Okay. But yeah, but there are like many other classes. So then question is how? Uh, what is the way to systematically um, uh, catch uh, consider those apps? So I'm gonna give you two ways, there are those um, which are like closely related. So the first um, way I'm gonna do is our uh, H smiley division. Okay. So yeah, so H is a list of forbidden graphs. Okay. So it can be a um, finite list or infinite list. Okay. I, I can yeah, I can um, take, consider both. And then it's like smiley can be um, your favorite notion of subgraph. Okay. So it can be subgraph, it can be induced subgraph, it can be minor. Yeah. You know more than I do. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, so once you fix H and smiley, then you can naturally find F to be the set of all graphs excluding H as a smiley. Okay. So then, yeah, then you can easily capture, this is a pretty general class, yeah. And then you can capture vertex cover, yeah, vertex cover, I think um, if H is just one edge, and then you can choose whatever smiley you want. And then if you have vertex set, I think, um, yeah, you can, if you set um, H to be set of all cycles, then you can um, choose a smiley as a subgraph or a new subgraph. Or yeah, if you want to be um, more concise, then you can choose a uh, you can choose um, H to be a triangle, and then I uh, want to delete um, H as a minor, and so things. Okay. So I will see T planar quarter. I think, yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's only a some way to um, express them as a H smile division. Okay. And then the second way, um, yeah, sorry about the choice. Actually, I mean, I, it's not like I'm against, yeah, I'm against the root division. I just chose smiley, and then I just wanted to do something else. But yeah, but the second way, which is like kind of related to the first guy, is um the frowny width division. Here, like the frowny can be anything um tree width, um path width, clay width, rank width, your favorite width parameter, and then uh, we're getting additional parameter k, which is just a positive integer, and then now f is set of all graphs um whose frowny width is at most k. And then yeah, so for some choice of a frowny and smiley, those are closely related and so on. Yeah, but like those are two are like a general framework to capture the like, many f. I don't know how general this is. Perhaps um, we can. Yeah, there may be some app which is not captured by any of this, but still, like these two are like fairly general classes. Okay. Yeah. So this was uh, this is the frame we're gonna play. Of course, like I'm not gonna. Yeah. I mean, we as a, a community don't know, the, don't understand this problem uh, very well. But um, first, I'm gonna talk about the um, uh, the case when smiley is either subgraph or induced subgraph, and then H is a finite. Okay. So that's um, where my initial interest for these problems um, came. Okay. It's a more, and then it's kind of more related to um, more um, traditional approximation algorithms um, literature. And then, so I'm going to talk about something about that briefly. And then I will um, naturally proceed to a more interesting case uh, where we are doing um, H minor deletion where we want to reduce a trivet. And then I'm going um, I'm gonna to say some technical things about those um, space. So that's the plan. Okay. And then let me, but let me begin with uh, some like easy stuff. Yeah, subgraph in this subgraph. Okay, so yeah. So 
Yeah, so now uh, we can talk about H sub graduation. Okay. Um, for now, let's assume that H is a just single graph. Okay. Though what I'm going to say uh, will hold for um, um, the family of graph as long as it's a finite class. Okay. So let H be a fixed graph with k vertices. Then we can, yeah, we can define H sub graduation to be um, given a graph G, you know, the minimum vertices such that G doesn't have a H as a sub graph. You know, you know, uh, normal sense. Okay. So for example, if uh, G is a disk graph and then H is a triangle, then currently we have many triangles, but we know that if we really build things, then we don't have a triangle. Okay. So these like three guys form a valid um, um H transfer okay. okay. So yeah, so whenever H um, has a K vertices, then I can I can show that um, it ha it, it, this form has an easy K approximation algorithm. Okay. So it's uh, very trivial, but yeah, let me go over. Okay. So yeah, what algorithm does the power? Okay. So we want to hit every um, copy of H. So what you are going to do is that we find a copy of H. So we want to, yeah, and then we know that we want to delete at least one vertex from this copy. Okay. But instead of doing this, yeah, we're going to remove the entire thing from G. Okay. And then repeal until there's no H. Okay. Then, yeah, then it's uh, for sure that, yeah, we are going to exclude every H. Okay. But how would this um, algorithm is? Okay. It's all pretty easy that um, it gives a key approximation algorithm. Um, because if a P is the number of H, um, copies of H we deleted during the course of algorithm, then we know that we have to remove the k times p vertices. But they're all like different copies of h. So whatever opt is, we don't know, but they, it must have removed at least p um, vertices. Okay. So that's a very um, easy k approximation algorithm. I mean, yeah, it's a very easy, but actually it's kind of a like common theme, or like at least a like common tool um, um, that most uh, approximation algorithms use. Okay. So because like, uh, what, uh, so whatever, um, whatever app you're considering, as long as that it has like small um, obstruction, very like small size subgraph um, you, that you want to delete. Then at least like, if you're interested in just like constant vector process algorithm, then you can just like delete the whole thing. Then you're gonna pay um, the k factor, additive k factor to approximation ratio. Then we can assume that those like small obstructions do not exist. Then and then they will um, make um, initial graph G, not exactly to H, uh, t t not exactly in G, but somewhat significantly simpler. Okay. So this is a um, very trivial algorithm, but it's uh, commonly used for like almost every approximation algorithm. But at least in this context, you can ask like, can you do better? Because like this like looks like very stupid. K approximation. Okay. But then the answer is a surprisingly maybe not. At least when H is uh, um, well connected. Okay. So um, so my, our result says that if um, H is a two vertex connected, okay. especially if H is a cycle, then actually um, if you believe in Unicam's conjecture, then actually for any um, number epsilon greater than zero, even K minus epsilon approximation is uh, impossible to do. So yeah, so I, as I said, um, I, the, I saved the result when H, um, H is a single graph. But, the, but we can, the same statement actually holds when H um, consists of uh, all cycles up to length K. Okay. Then actually we can show that, yeah, say, uh, suppose that K is 10. Okay. Then we show that um, this problem um, overheating like all short cycle is a hard to even so back to 10. Okay. But if H is a set of all cycles, then actually, um, that, then it becomes a feedback vertex set. Okay. So then actually, uh, out of sudden, actually the, the feedback vertex set admits on two approximation algorithm. So somehow it's like, yeah, so, yeah, this like trivial approximation algorithm isn't everything that algorithm can do. So we can do more interesting things. Okay. So hitting short cycles is harder than hitting whole cycles. Okay. And then, uh, so we stated the result um, for the subgraph, when smile is a subgraph. I didn't um, check thoroughly, but the same statement may be extensible to induce subgraph. Okay. But I didn't check, so yeah, um, don't quote me here. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's our status. Okay, so if H is well connected, then actually this problem is really hard. Okay. Then, then, yeah, you may to study one connected H. Okay. And then I thought, okay, like, then, um, so H then must look like tree. And then I think um, two representative cases are K path and K star. So K path. So four star is this, and the four path is this. Okay. So let's first look at the K star. Okay. Then you can easily convince yourself that this problem is exactly equivalent um, to um, um, delete the minimum of vertices uh, to reduce the maximum degree at most K minus two. Because if there's a um, yeah, vertex with um, degree at least K minus one, then you can find the K star. Okay. So it's again like very natural problem. But you can also assume that if our initial graph G is a K minus one regular, then this problem exactly becomes a dominating set. Because like if you are a vertex, then yeah, either you have to delete it or like one of your neighbors have to delete it. 
in order to have a message here at both k-rest. Okay. Then actually, the remaining set actually admits a log k approximation algorithm. Okay. So yeah, we can e easily extend it to get log, log k approximation algorithm. And then actually, it is tight. So you can't do better. So this is like one very like not true. I mean, it's uh, yeah, we are piggybacking on dominating set algorithm, but there's like some interesting class where we can get log k, which is significantly better than k. So you're saying that dominating the, the, the don't have a approximation algorithm. You don't have approximation algorithm better than log k factor, but that doesn't mean that you have a log k approximation algorithm. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, yeah, I I needed to do some work. Yeah. To extend the dominating set algorithm to this setting. Yeah, so there, there was some work. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a K star. Okay. And then, like, K pat actually turned out to be more interesting because, like, yeah, this is exactly the um, point where I um, 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 made a transition from, like, subgraph to, like, minor and trivet. Okay. And then the connection was, like, very simple. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, we can easily say that if like, G doesn't have a simple K path, then um, G has uh, the path is at most K because uh, if you uh, if you think about the the GSS tree, then the depth of this is uh, bounded by K, and then, then the path is uh, at most K, and then tree is at most K. Okay. Then we can see that yeah. So then suppose that yeah, um, the instance um, admits a small vertex set uh, such that whose deletion actually leaves um, expose all K path. Then if you can actually um, solve this like K, tree K deletion problem, then yeah, then actually you are pretty much done because um, yeah, so. So like um, k path transversal is easy on um, treat, uh, bounded trait graph. Okay. So that's the connection uh, we found. Okay. And then yeah, and then I'm gonna now talk about the more interesting stuff. Okay. Where we wanna talk about the uh, we wanna delete minors or like a uh, reduced trait. Okay. okay. So yeah, I just made it slides for that. I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so our main result is that uh, we can get log k approximation. For two k division in time f of k times n to the constant. So yeah, so we, we kind of gave um, a parameterized approximate algorithm parameterized by this like two k. Okay. So and then yeah, we can easily see that um, we can't do anything um, in like purely polynomial time because like even deciding to it is a k or not is uh, is n okay. And then so the similar um, approximate algorithm existed. Um, so this is the result by uh, Holman, Nokshan, Misa, and Saura. So they gave a G of K approximate algorithm in similar running time, and then G, uh, they, they didn't spe specify what it is. I assume that's at least exponential, I don't know, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so this is an improvement in terms of K. And then, yeah, so and then we can see that once you can do this, then we can also do um, H minor division when H contains a planar graph. Because uh, if a graph is H free, H free, then actually, yeah, by uh, so yeah, we know that truth is bounded by side wage. So yeah, so we're gonna focus on the, the truth k division, and then actually yeah, let me um, give you more than like 80% of actually the whole proof. So yeah, in order to solve the k truth division, actually yeah, so we introduced like some um, intermediate graph partition problem, which looked actually more to like um, problems in the approximate algorithm literature. So the problem is the following. So it's called the k subset vertex operator. Okay. So, so now we are given a graph G, and then set R of red vertices. Okay, some vertices are red. Okay. And then what we want to do is that we want to remove the minimum of vertices, such that if you look at each connected component, it has a, at most K or like a string less than K, it doesn't matter. Yeah, at most K red vertices. So this is a problem. And then you can yeah you can delete red vertices. So deleting all red vertices is is one option. Okay. So yeah, in this picture, so if the K is three. Um, then it currently has like four red vertices, so it's not good. But you can see that if we delete these like two vertices, then the graph is a partition to two connected components, and each connected component has a strictly less than three red vertices. So this is a good solution. So yeah, for this problem, so like um, two years earlier, so I gave a log k approximate algorithm, and then actually this like, uses like very like standard tools from approximate algorithm literature. Okay, so uh, um, there are, it's, uh, it's, uh, it proceeds with the L2 relaxation rounding. So thank you. And then LP relaxation even has a name. It's called the spreading matrix. And then even rounding algorithm has a name. It's called the CKR rounding, um, named after the, the authors. Okay. So yeah, let me yeah, show you the proof, how to do it. And then just for simplicity, I'm going to focus on the special case when every vertex is red. Okay. Then yeah, basically what we want to do is that yeah, we want each connected component uh, to be small, has to have uh, most k vertices. 
yeah. So this is like with loss of generality, but I can I can assure you like once you have this, then you can change like ten letters from the paper to to get the get the original algorithm. So yeah, let me show you this. Okay. So yeah, so yeah, we are doing approximate algorithm. So what yeah, what what can you do? Okay. So yeah, I first formulate um, this problem as an integer program. Okay. So um the yeah, so we're gonna assign um each variable x v to each vertex v, and then it's gonna it's supposed to indicate where whether we delete this vertex or not. Okay. So xv should be 0 or 1. And then we want to minimize the sum of xv. And then, so like a full, um, two vertices as u and v. So duv is supposed to be the minimum distance between u and v. Okay. So we are going to interpret this sum xv as a distance to the vertices. So it's slightly confusing because um, yeah, distance are usually on edges, not vertices. But yeah, we can, yeah, we can imagine um, distance are on vertices. And then when I define duv, um, I include the length of both u and v. Okay. So for example, if from u, uh, if x u is one, then x v is one, and then if they have an edge, then d u v is a two. Okay. So that's the that's the the definition I use. Sorry. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. So if from um, x u is one. No, the, this is a, the shortest distance. So, yeah. So yeah. So if yeah, you have a u and you have a v. And then you have a like length on vertices, then that's um the then the duv is the shortest of the distance from u to v. Yeah, shortest path distance, yeah, according to this like vertex length. And then I'm including the length of u and v. So yeah, duv is at, at least uh, always at least on xu plus xv. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. oh so it's a number of edges plus xv. No, like in the, yeah, the length, uh, yeah, so edge, yeah, so length are only on vertices. Yeah, so let me be, yeah. So yeah. I think, yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, let me do an example. So like, yeah, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, um, that's like 0.4. So far, this is a typical yeah, It's true, yeah. <laughs> we will be like, yeah, in the next slide, we're going to go to, yeah. <laughs> okay, then, yeah, so if, uh, if X values look like this, then um, D, Y, V, for example, is what? So perhaps, uh, yeah, we, this is a faster way. So it's a 0.4 plus 0.1 plus 0.2. Oh, Sorry, 0.7. Okay. And then, um, yeah, the um, UV is a 0.5. Uh -huh. So the sum of x values on the, on the x. Yeah, yeah, minimum yeah, minimum sum, yeah. Yeah, for any yeah, for any path, um, for any UV path, yeah, yeah, some old x values and then take the minimum. Is it clear? Good. Yeah, so that was a duv, and then the this variable fuv is supposed to indicate whether u and v are in the same connecting component or not after evolution. Okay. So the only way, so if like x v is a zero one variable, then the only way um u and v are in the within the same connecting component. Is uh is when um u v is a zero. Okay, so we can yeah we can write it as a yeah f u v is a maximum of a uh, either zero and or minus u v. And then finally the most impor important constraint is a spreading constraint. Okay, it says that if um you, if uh, for every for every vertex v, okay, so then like the sum of uh, f u v um denotes the number of vertices who are in the same component with me. Okay, and then we want that to be at most k minus one. For every vertex v. So this is a LP relax. I mean, this is an integer problem relaxation. Of course, we can't solve it. So we just um, relax it to LP. Only thing I did is that yeah, I just allow x of v to have a fractional value between zero and one. And then yeah, and then this um, I mean, I wrote it like uh, in words, but you can just uh, yeah, easily formulate as LPs. Okay. And then this is LP, so we can like solve it optimally. Okay. So I'm gonna work with this um, optimal. Um, LP solution, which will give us some um, XV, VUV, and then FUV. Okay. But it's gonna be a fractional value, so we gotta deal with it eventually. Okay. So yeah, let's say like um, capital F to be the, the, the fractional optimal. Okay. So LP value. And then yeah, and then yeah, so yeah. So if we um, can bound our, so the size of our solution in terms of F, then yeah, actually we can get a proxy Yeah. So then yeah, we're gonna get like log K approximation. So that's the plan. Okay, let's um, let's um, show you how to round it. Okay. So first step is really easy. Okay. So yeah. So first step is that whenever v 
um, has a LP value greater than one quarter. I'm just gonna like delete them. Okay? That's uh, kind of easy because like there are all like there are like four f of them, okay? and then we're gonna lose like every two four factor in the approximation ratio, but it's fine because like yeah, we are already like aiming for like our k approximation. So that step is easy. I mean yeah, it's not really needed, but yeah, it kind of simplifies the explanation. Okay. So we can assume this. So every vertex has a small LP value. Okay. So then actually then yeah, we um have to round it. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, every vertex V has a distance xv. Okay. Then I can define this like circle. Um yeah, for each vertex w, I can circle around w with radius x. X will be some um some number between two and one. Okay. Then this like circle has like two components. It has an interior and boundary. So, in, uh, so interior is just like a set of vertices v, um, whose distance from w is uh, strictly less than x, and then our uh, boundary is just um, set of all vertices v, um, uh, where x is sandwiched between um, d w v minus x v and then d w v. Um, yeah, it got, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit confusing, but I think it's much, much, much more clear in the, um, in the picture. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so yeah, this guy is W. It has a, like a length of 0.1. Okay. So yeah. So then yeah, so the, suppose that yeah, W's center is here. So then yeah, if you draw like the, the circle of a radius 0 0.05, then it doesn't, it didn't even escape the, the W. Okay. So then yeah, so then um, boundary is just W because um, so basically the boundary is a set of vertices um, who is actually crossed by this circle. And then the, the interior is a uh, uh, set of vertices who are like um, e exactly in, um, inside the, the circle. Okay. So in this case, like uh, there's uh, one boundary and no interior. But yeah, if we draw this um, circle, then yeah, boundary is ABC, and then there's only one guy in the strip interior, and so on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that, yeah, that was uh, what this the, the formula meant, I think. I mean, yeah, it confuses me as well, yeah, often. So yeah, that's uh, my definition. And then uh, one like key property, which is like very easy to prove, is that yeah. So then yeah, if you like think about one vertex w, and then draw a circle of a radius half, the uh, half, then actually um in the interior there are like at most two k vertices. Okay. I mean, it's a very easy um averaging argument. Okay, suppose that there are like more than two k vertices. Okay. Then um. Then actually we know that yeah for every vertex in the strip interior, okay. So by definition, it's a distance from um, w is at most 0.5, and then by our LP constraint, um, f w u must be greater than 0.5, and then and then, and then the my final constraint actually says that some of the f value um, should be um, at most um, k minus one, okay. So around every every vertex um, w, so each uh, this constraint is my final LP constraint. Okay, so, so this is like very um, easy key property, but actually we're gonna use it um, repeatedly. Okay, yes, this is a, this is a, a relaxation again. Okay. So and then actually this is the the, the rounding algorithm. Okay. So rounding algorithm is also very simple. Okay. So we're gonna first um, decide the radius. Okay. X um um yeah um uniformly at random from this interval between one eight and one. Okay. And actually it's a crucial that every vertex will use the same radius. Yeah, there's only one radius, x. Okay. And then there's another source of randomness. Yeah, we're gonna randomly permit v. Okay. And then we're gonna consider the each vertex in this like random order. Okay. So when we consider this uh, vertex w, then we consider this um the circle around w over radius x. Okay. Then each circle has a the, the boundary and interior. Okay. Then what you're gonna do is like we just we just remove um the boundary from the graph. Okay. Then yeah, by definition we remove the boundary. Then we know that the interior of this circle is disconnected from the rest of the graph. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah. So then there's like some, yeah, some graph left, and then we proceed with the uh, remaining graph. Yeah, like some, yeah, some vertices are removed, and some vertices are just disconnected, not removed. But yeah, anyway, yeah, we proceed to the remaining graph. Okay. And then until, until, yeah, there's nothing left. Okay. So this is a whole the rounding algorithm. So I just told you the whole algorithm, and I just need to analyze it. Okay, yeah, yeah, so let me, yeah, let me just um, give you some um, example of how this works, okay? So yeah, yeah, suppose that this is the first guy, okay? Then yeah, we just draw this uh, circle, and then yeah, we delete those uh, boundaries. Okay? And then if you delete this, then actually this, this guy will be disconnected, okay? 
So we are left with this, like the small part on the top. And then we draw another circle, uh, we delete the boundary, and then now we are done. Okay. So this is how the algorithm works. And then let's try to analyze it. Okay. So yeah, and so at the end, um, so we deleted those like five um, green vertices, and then we know that then each connected component was a uh, was a uh, interior of a some circle. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Let's try to prove that it's good. So first thing I want to say is that each connecting component after division is a small. Okay. I want to say that this is, it has at most like two k vertices. Okay. So it's not quite k, but yeah, we can see that yeah, once you once each connected ha component has a two k, then you can just like um, do exhaustive search in each connected component. Perhaps you need to pay additive one factor in approximate ratio, but that's fine. Okay. So yeah, two k is uh, what you want. And then again, it's like very easy to see because um, because I told you like um, yeah, each uh, connected component was a in strict interior of some ball over radius x. Okay, and then x is like say, less than half. And then I told you this like, key lemma. The interior of any um, circle is that has at most two k vertices. So uh, yeah, so I already told, yeah. Then yeah, that part is fine. So each, each connecting component is small. And then all I need to do is to count how many vertices we removed. Okay. And then here like, I just like simply do the, the apply the linear to expectation. So then all I need to do is like fix a vertex V. And then I want to compute the, what is the probability that V is removed. Okay, let's try to argue, yeah, think about this. So yeah, so suppose that this guy is V. Okay. Then we call that like V is removed when it is crossed by some circle, okay. some other guy's circle, or like maybe it's a one circle. Okay. So let's first um, see whose circle can possibly cross V. Okay. So yeah, this guy's circle can. And then this guy, and some other guys. Okay. But yeah, by design of our algorithm, we knew that um, each circle's radius is at, uh, at most um, one quarter. And then um, in the beginning, I made sure that each vertex length is at most one quarter. Okay. So it means that, yeah. So it means that if like some guy circle can possibly cross V, then actually this guy must be close to V. Okay. It's like one quarter, one quarter. So it's uh, yeah, some is at most half. So again, yeah, so yeah, that's why I said, yeah. So if um, W circle can uh, possibly cross V, then the distance between V and W is at most half. Then, yeah, then we know that, yeah, then we know that the, the set of all these like possible centers actually are in the, in this uh, interior of this uh, circle around V. And then by this like, um, this lemma again, yeah, the number of possible centers is bounded by 2K. And then actually, I mean, this is the only part where kind of we improve from log n to log K. By this like simple trick. So yeah, so yeah, since we are thinking about this guy, so we can focus on only like two k possible centers. And then yeah, let's even like fix one yeah possible center like this like a um, vertex four. Okay. Oh, okay. So so here um let me um label um those like um possible centers from one to whatever um such that um the vertex one is the closest to v, and then vertex um six is the farthest from v. Okay, I ordered them according to the distance from B. Okay. And then look, let's look at the vertex 4. And then ask um, what's the probability that W circle can possibly cross V. Okay. Okay, so yeah, here yeah, it doesn't. Here it does. Okay. But yeah, but we can easily actually say that yeah, so this is because our X is a sample from an interval over length um, 1 8, which is a constant. Okay. And then we know that um, V actually, um, V is crossed by this circle. When x is a sandwich between uh, interval length of xp. Okay. So the probability that um, um, the w circle can possibly cross b is just, um, yeah, it's at most the ratio between these two um, guys, which is 8 times xp. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so this, yeah, so, yeah, so it's, um, if um, so this, um, this, uh, this length is xp, and then, yeah, and then we, um, so, and then x is our x is our sampled from uh, an interval between one eight and one quarter. Okay. So yeah, so the probability that this um, circle can that can cross um, this um, yeah, this vertex is at most um, at most like a length of this vertex, and then and then the, the length of the, the the interval we sampled x from is a one eight. So it's, it's just um, x v yeah divided by the length of the interval, which is like eight times x v. All I said is that, yeah, 
you, if x is sampled from like some yeah, interval of a constant length, then this one is like order of xv. Oh, interval one, yeah, man. I think, yeah, I just, yeah, this, yeah, this guy's interval one. I think, yeah, this, yeah, this one is unnecessarily pedantic, I guess, yeah. But all, yeah, all I'm saying is that, yeah, so probably there's yeah, one guy circle can cross V is a uh, order of X. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, this is a purely um, with respect to randomness of x. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good, and then it gives us something because like then we can then, yeah, so then we can take a union bundle all these um, two k guys, and then then we can conclude that actually the probability that these are deleted is at most um, the order k times x. Okay. So it will give us a k approximation already. But like we wanted to do better. Okay. So yeah. So. Yeah, so we need to better like so let's uh, think a little bit more. So yeah, suppose that yeah, so yeah, so we are still talking about the uh, vertex four. Okay. So yeah, suppose that now the uh, this circle, okay, so we uh, fix our um, radius x such that the four circle circle crosses B. But then there may be cases that actually the uh, this circle is not the circle that removes V. V might have been removed earlier. So yeah, so let's think about this case. So let's fix that radius, and then suppose that the vertex one was considered before vertex four, okay, with the same radius. Okay. Now we are crucially using the fact that we are using everybody is the same, using the same radius. Okay. So now what we know is that with the same radius, from vertex car four, the circle crossed um, V, okay, and then vertex one was even closer to vertex V than vertex four. Okay. So what it says is that then actually, then this is like the circle on one with the same radius will either cross V or it's gonna contain V in the strict interior because we are using the same radius and then uh, vertex one is a closer to V than four. Okay, so this is like yeah, easy fact. Okay. So yeah, actually then actually you can easily convince yourself that yeah. So this is uh, this like this order, yeah. Um, so then actually whatever like X is, if a vertex one was um, considered before vertex four, okay. in uh, with respect to permutation of uh, the random randomness of choosing permutation, then actually there's like no way that vertex four serves to remove v. Okay. Okay. And then and then there's nothing special about one. So like uh, same thing holds for like two and three. If a vertex two was considered before vertex four, then there's no way that vertex four can remove a vertex v. So then actually, yeah, so we are done. Yeah, we can just like yeah, write down the formula. Okay. So yeah, let's, um, yeah, we have the V and then, yeah, so uh, let W1 through W2K be possible uh, centers where like I order with respect to distances. Okay. Then prob and then you can easily um, compute the probability that V is removed. This is the summation of the probability, uh, probability that V is removed by like one particular center, WI. Okay. Then I um, convinced you, uh, hopefully, that um, wi can remove v if um, w if um, only if wi is considered before like all these um, guys who are before i and times x times yeah eight xv. So then yeah we can see that this is just like yeah um, eight xv um, times a uh, k thermal number, so which is like just like log k times xv. Okay, so that's the whole um, analysis. This so this rounding scheme it's uh, it's very simple but clever. Called the CKR rounding, uh, named after Carnescu, um, Rabani, and Carlo. And then, um, so yeah, then actually, yeah, so we just um, prove this for one vertex, and we use the uh, linear to expectation to finally com com yeah, conclude our algorithm is on log k approximation algorithm. Okay. Yeah, so this is like, yeah, very simple to check. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so now we are done with um, k vertex separator, but now yeah, I'm going to assume that actually we can get a log k approximate algorithm for k subset vertex separator, the 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 version where like um, there are red vertices, yeah, not possibly to everything. Okay. And then I'm going to tell you how to um, apply this um, to reduce period. Okay. So this is the second part. Okay. 
But actually, this part is also, I mean, I, I, mean, I think uh, for this area, this, uh, this part is, uh, is going to be very key. Okay? Yeah. So this, um, the ultimately, this algorithm is an iterative refinement algorithm. Okay. So um, we start, we start with um, some feasible solution. We can start even with uh, like the whole, the whole vertex set. Okay. And then in each iteration, we refine it to the better solution, smaller solution. And then eventually, yeah, we want to prove that um, if um, um, we can't further reduce the solution, then actually it's already lucky. So that's the, the how the algorithm in the paper worked. But um, but um, today, just um, for simplicity, I'm going to show you only one step of iteration. Okay. Where I'm going to assume that we already have a k approximation solution, k approximate solution. So this R is a k approximate solution. And then I'm going to show you one step of refinement where I'm going to refine this solution R to R prime such that R prime is already a k approximation solution. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to show you one, one refinement step. But, the, but even the whole, the whole like, the entire is just like five more lines. Okay. So I'm, yeah, let me show you just one refinement step. So yeah, um, so yeah, so we're gonna work this R, which is supposed to be the um, our current feasible solution, k approximate solution, and then this lemma um, we're gonna use is like very simple. Yeah, it says that if you have this R, then there exists like small set S, such that size of S is uh, bounded by two times opt of the two k solution problem, and then if you delete um, S from the graph, then um, the resulting um, um, graph has many connecting components, and then each connecting component has at most k scale red vertices. Okay. Here, actually, I carefully chose this letter R, such that you can interpret this, um, the, the, these vertices in our current solution as red vertices. Okay. So yeah, each connecting component has at most like, k scale um, um, red, red vertices. Okay. okay, so this lemma actually doesn't need to be constructive. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the proof won't be constructive, so we don't need to find it when we put it on the time. But at least, like, what this lemma says that, so then if you think about this, like, k square vertex separator problem, okay, then, yeah, I mean, I don't know, yeah, I don't know how to find this set S, but at least this set, this set S certifies that, um, if you think about this problem, then the optimal of this um, separator problem is at most two times out, because the S is a feasible solution for this problem. Okay. Yeah, this, yeah, so this is what the lemma says. I'm going to prove it later. Okay. But then, actually, we can do the algorithm. Okay, so yeah, so we have a current solution R, which are red vertices. Then what you are going to do is that we can solve a k squared subset of vertex separator. Okay, so we know that optimal of this new problem is uh, at most two times out. So and then yeah, and then I gave you like log k approximation algorithm. So um, overall, we deleted um, we can delete log k um, times out vertices to make sure that each connected component has at most um, k squared red vertices. But then, yeah, what is the red versus? It was a feasible solution for the two k decision problem. Okay. Yeah, so each connecting component has a most on k scale red versus. Then, yeah, we know that, yeah, so this is a feasible solution. So each connecting component, the truth is at most um, k plus k square. Because, um, yeah, so it was a feasible solution, and then each um, connected component has at most k square red versus. Okay. Then it's, uh, yeah, it's bounded, and then I'm willing to parameterize by k. So you can you, you can use your favorite method um, to solve this problem at, um, optimally. So that will incur additional factor, yeah, additional um, additive factor one. But yeah, still yeah. So that will give you a new feasible solution, which is a uh, log k approximate. So yeah, so we are actually done module with this lemma. So yeah, let me just show you. Again, this is a very um, simple thing. Yeah, so the lemma says that we can delete a small number of vertices from the, the, the graph, such that each connected component has at most k square red vertices. Actually, I mean, so yeah, after we proved, yeah, it actually we realized actually this um, same kind of trick was repeatedly used in uh, PT algorithms um, literature. Actually, I mean, some, yeah, some um, need to be um, more advanced because like they kind of needed to compute the um, um, data explicitly, where actually we don't. Okay, but the lemma is very simple. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, the first thing we do is like, yeah, we just delete um, the optimal um, solution from the graph. Now we have a tree decomposition, where every back has a size at most k. Okay. Then, yeah, I'm going to do this, um, the, uh, this like, um, imaginary algorithm, where um, this, uh, when we look at this um, rooted tree decomposition, what we're going to do is that we're going to choose a minimal subtree uh, that has a, um, um, strictly more than k square red vertices. Okay. And then we're going to remove the root of the subtree. 
then we delete k vertices. And then, and then, and then we know that like um, the subtree is uh, separated from the rest of the graph. Then just like we repeat until, yeah, there's nothing in the tree accomplished. So yeah, to illustrate, okay, so if a k is two, then currently uh, we have like many red vertices, but uh, but this um, subtree is uh, is a smallest subtree that has uh, more than um, two red vertices. So we delete the vertex this um this root, and then the corresponding vertices in the graph. So we delete one and seven from everywhere. So then actually we know that uh, these parts are separated from the rest of the graph, and then yeah, each um each connected component has a uh, and most um, k scale red vertices. Okay. So yeah, this is a yeah, this is a very simple procedure. Okay. And then you know that yeah, the the two is satisfied by design. So whenever we see more than k scale, just we, do, we remove the back. So each connecting component has at most um, k scale red vertices. And then for the first, um, so yeah, how many vertices we deleted? Okay. We deleted opt in the beginning. Okay. And then so if you think about this like this um, procedure. Then we can see that, so yeah, whenever we remove some back, okay, so we remove only one back, so we remove, remove like k vertices, but then by um, removing k vertices, we separate at least some k scale red vertices from the graph. Okay. So this um, thing called um, deletion separation ratio is uh, at most of one over k. Okay. And then I already told you that r is a k approximate solution. So yeah, so the number of vertices we deleted is at most r divided by k, which is opt. Okay. So we so far yeah, so in total we deleted two times opt. Okay. So that's the yeah, that's the proof of a key lemma. And then, and then yeah, you can yeah, then actually this finishes the algorithm. Oh, so, so in which graph do you call this? Um, so we really need to after deleting opt, opt of the truth k k yeah, opt of our original problems. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, this doesn't, yeah, this is not, and then this doesn't need to be, because this only shows that, that we can use um, yeah, subset vertex separator, yeah. So this is just um, yeah. R is Sorry. R is any k approximation set. R is uh, yeah, yeah, R is any k approximation set, yeah. Yeah, so that's the whole proof. Any question about the, the algorithm or so? Okay, good. Okay. So yeah, so again, yeah, this is the final result. Yeah, we gave a lucky approximation in um, every time Paris tries to it. And um, yeah, so yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I want to mention some of my favorite problems. And then actually, yeah, so I mean, I showed you like some classical results in the beginning. And then presented my results um, actually um, for the most of the time, but um, actually, but but that's uh, pretty much it, I guess. There are like a lot of uh, problems that were like unstudied, so I think there are like a lot of uh, um, great problems there. So uh, yeah, some of my favorite ones are you know, what about f is a total graph? What if um, f is a perfect graph? Or or like yeah, so I yeah, so now we can reduce our play width uh, somewhat nicely. So what about play width, rank width? Yeah, the, everything is uh, pretty much open here. And then actually, so since we talked about the truth k deletion, so one problem I um, one problem I think about is that so now the the approximation ratio log k, which is increasing with k, and then I think uh, one question is whether we can get absolute constant approximation algorithm. Your approximation algorithm doesn't even depend on k. Yes, for example, can we have a k approximation algorithm? Okay, I think this is not ruled out. Whether the like though like the truth is uh, kind of debatable. And actually, I mean, and then I just wanted to mention that actually there's um, nothing, yeah. So the, yes. So if we can get like um, this like constant approximation with this um, separator problem, then it, it's going to immediately be like um, order one approximation with it for two equations. Yeah, so I mean, so yeah, yeah, so yes. So that's what, that, that's approximation ratio is depends on k. So that's, that's what, that, that's what G, yeah, G of k approximation with. They, they, so they said, yeah, they said it's a constant assuming that k is fixed. But yeah, I mean, so this, yeah, our result is a log k, so improve the, their result. But yeah, what I'm saying is that there's absolute constant that doesn't even depend on k. So it's two approximation. I think this is not ruled out, and then maybe it's possible or not, yeah. Would it increase the constant approximation for k? 
true it? The the computing the truth itself? Yes. I think I mean any, anyway I mean anyway so it's a it's an NPR to compute if k is general. And then I mean then, then we can compute exactly like yeah, in FPT time and then some single exponential approximation algorithm, right? Yeah, but there is a k log k k log of Oh you mean Randomized by uh, actually, I can't get it. Yes, you can even go ejected by using each other technique. Scared log opt, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think opt, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you. That's, uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, 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 so that's kind of even better than, yeah, like log k, so like k is, um, yeah. Yeah. Opt is equal to k. Yeah, so the whole, yeah, whole point is like whether we can actually uh, um, replace like n or opt by just k. Yeah. Because like k seems to be like smaller parameter. Yeah. 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 And then I, I'm, I'm even claiming that actually like in the approximate wise, like actually, person there, yeah, may not even be a like dependence on k. I mean, running time, you know, it should certainly depend on k. Otherwise, yeah, so it's an NPR problem. Okay. So that's our second um, bullet. And then the third bullet is uh is like a h minor duration for like um finite h. Okay. So yeah, for example, like planarization. Okay. So here like the, um, I think it's um so the question is like is there any hardness better than vertex cover? Okay. It's um I mean vertex cover gives you two hardness, but it's kind of shameful that they are even like k33 and k5 duration gives you like huge pain to get even like fully log n approximation algorithm. I think it's just like crazy. That everything, yeah, could be as easy as a vertex cover, but yeah, it's, it's not rolled out yet. And then actually, uh, as I mentioned, the old cycle transfer so is the only problem that I know which um, has a super constant hardness. So actually, uh, so my question actually was that: is there a way to capture OCT as a minor duration? No, right? Okay. Odd minor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps yeah, yeah. We can chat about that. Yeah. So anyway, like for any any H minor duration, do you have any other spare than two? I think this is kind of embarrassing. Yeah. And then and then yeah, as I as I, as I, uh, as I mentioned, yeah, I didn't talk about the vertex weighted or edge duration at all. Okay. But there are, certainly there are like very um interesting questions. Somehow actually yeah, in this space yeah, so vertex duration was um was uh, the the most popular uh, version. But somehow, like, I mean, actually, in the approximation algorithm literature, actually, edge division versions are, like, way more popular, especially when you're talking about partitioning and other problems. Okay. Um, so, we can, yeah, we can certainly ask about the vertex weighted or edge division version. Okay. So, I think, um, since yeah, we, I talked about two decay division, okay, I think the first um, 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 very nice uh, open problem is to um, see whether we can get f of k approximation, okay. which means if k is constant, then it will get, uh, can you get constant approximation algorithm for the vertex weighted version or edge division version. And then actually, um, yeah, so this is open, so we can get log n, or like perhaps like log opt, or like a yeah, poly log opt, but that's it. So yeah, this is a very nice open problem. And then uh, finally, I wanted to advertise uh, one another result in our, in our paper, um, which says that if you think about the analog of uh, this like, vertex separator problem in the edge version, okay? so now the problem is called the K subset edge separator. Um, um, the problem is that yeah, you are given a graph G, and then instead of red vertices, and then you want to remove the minimum number of edges such that each connected component has at most k of red vertices. So it's just like exact analog of a, it's a separator version. And then actually it turns out that this version, yeah, this edge duration version, has like two approximation algorithm. So even like better than the log k approximation algorithm for the vertex separator. Okay. So I spent a few days um, trying to find the applications of this. It's going to be even nicer because like, it's uh, approximation ratios too. So you can, if you can uh, find the analog connection between um, this algorithm and uh, other like um, edge duration versions, that's going to be really nice. I couldn't do it, but yeah, some yeah some people in the audience can do. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Thanks.